Welcome back to a video where I explain stuff in Minecraft, isn't that right Franz? Yeah, woo! Today we will take a look at areas that have an increased risk in flooding and also what to do to prevent them. So there are seven types of areas that have an increased risk in flooding and we will go through them one by one. In the end we will have seven measures that you can do to prevent from flooding. Alright, let's go! So the first area that has an increased risk of flooding is the area near coast and rivers or deltas. This is because these areas are usually flat and low laying and when there is a heavy rainfall the water can easily get out of the river and flood the plains. So number one is coastal and river plains. There we go. Yeah. The second area that has a very high risk of flooding is the area at the foot of a mountain. Sometimes the foot of a mountain has a rocky surface, as you can see here. The rocky ground means that the water cannot go in the ground but has to go over it. And the bed of the river is usually very small. So the amount of water that the river can take is not so much. So all the rainwater will go into the river and eventually the river will be full. And since the river is very small, the rest of the water will cause a flood. If there is too much water in one place at one time, you call it a peak discharge. A peak discharge is the greatest amount of water the river takes. So number two areas at the foot of a mountain with a rocky surface. All right. The third area that has an increased risk of flooding is an area where the melting of snow and ice goes together with rain. So if there is end rainwater and meltwater, this can cause the river to flood. So the third area is melting snow slash ice with heavy rainfall. The fourth area with an increased risk of flooding is an area where tropical hurricanes are very common. These hurricanes cause a lot of rain, but also cause a lot of wind. And this wind will push the seawater to the land and thus rising up the sea level. So the fourth area are areas where tropical hurricanes are common. The fifth area that has an increased risk of flooding are areas that undergo deforestation. The, the trees and the forest itself can hold back water like a sponge. But if there are no more trees left, the water won't be absorbed by the trees. This means that the water can move freely without being absorbed into the ground, causing the river to overflow. Another peak discharge. If the trees were here, all the rainwater would have firstly been absorbed by the trees and then go to the river. Now the rainwater will flow directly into the river, causing the river to flood. So, the fifth area are areas where deforestation took place. Just like with deforestation, where the water flows back straight into the river instead of sinking into the ground into the roots of the trees, the same happens to places that have been fossilized. A place where there is no more nature but a lot of buildings and pavements, the water cannot sink into the ground but will immediately flow towards the river. This will cause the river to have a peak discharge and thus the area will flood. So, our sixth area are areas that have been fossilized. The seventh and last area that has an increased risk of flooding are areas with soil subsidence. This means that water, that groundwater is being pumped out and that the soil around this area will sink. This lower terrain of land that has been caused by pumping up groundwater has a high risk of flooding. So our seventh and last area are areas with soil subsidence. If you've noticed, you've seen that the first four areas are usually caused by a natural way, but the last three areas are caused by humans. So what can you do against these floodings? Well, there are two types of ways you can help against these floodings. You have short-term measurements and you have long-term measurements. For the short-term measurements, you can of course build some dikes. You can also monitor the weather in all these risk areas. You can also educate the people in those areas and educate them how to, for example, evacuate. And of course, you can save up some food and fresh water. If a flooding happens, you always have enough food. Franz.
a... <laughs> The long-term measurements are a bit different. These long-term measurements do have a better effect in the long run, in the future. First of all, you can make an extra river next to the existing one. This means that all the water doesn't have to flow through one, but to two rivers. And this will give less stress to the first river. The second long-term measure is trying to reduce our enhanced greenhouse effect. This will help to prevent the rise of the sea level and thus preventing flooding near the ocean. And the last long-term measurement you can take is making a local policy, where the local government decides if it is a good idea to live close to these flooding areas. They can decide if they want people to live close to these flooding areas, and also decide if it is illegal or legal to go there. So in short, you have seven areas that have a high risk of flooding throughout the whole world, and you have long-term and short-term measurements to help prevent from flooding. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.